Okay. So, hello everybody. Uh, my name is Stephen Cotty. Uh, most, I'm best known for my work in the field of meditation. However, I have also trained over a 20-something year period uh, with Andre Gospodarczyk and Lisa Foster in Ryoho Yoga, uh, including um, my yoga teacher training diploma twice uh, and my shiatsu uh, diploma. So I suppose that makes me either a very dedicated thorough learner or a slow learner. I'm still trying to figure that out. But in my... Um, thank you, thank you. In my attempt at um, thoroughness in my understanding of the yoga, uh, there was a series of uh, discussions I had with Andre in 2016, where I was attempting to one-on-one -on -one chats with him, uh, where I was attempting to cover a number of topics in a system, uh, systematic way from sort of start to finish, which was not his natural teaching style. <laughs> um, so I covered a few, a few mini topics in that, and one of those was the topic of sit-ups. And that's what I'm going to present to you today. So my talk's a little bit different in that I'm going to try not to speak from my own perspective uh, as much as possible, but rather um, kind of faithfully uh, represent what it was that Andre um, taught me over those series of conversations on the topic of sit-ups. So I asked Andre um, where to start with sit-ups. And he said, in order to do sit-ups, a person needs to be able to distinguish between the upper body and the lower body. To feel yourself in your body, the mind in the body. How? First, you need to separate or isolate mind and body in order to be able to, to combine them. We can separate or isolate the mind and body simply by breathing in and feeling what happens and by breathing out and feeling what happens. Which area in the body do you feel it in? Where does it create pressure? This is the first bit of being able to focus. So the philosophical aspect of this is that you are not your body and yet you are. You are defined by your body, but it's not you. If the body is a sharpening stone, you are the knife being defined by it. And once you are defined by it, then even when the sharpening stone, the body falls away, you remain. That's the goal, at least. Again, Andre's words. Yeah. So um, the next thing is around correct versus incorrect methods of sitting up. And now a lot, a lot of this, is, uh, this is me talking as an aside, a, a lot of what we covered is, is about um, how to use sit-ups in a class, in the format of a class during class design, um, as well as different types of sit-ups for different organs and meridian systems. So now we're getting to the bit about, about classes. Trying to exhaust the incorrect behavior in sit-ups, that is incorrect behavior being using the upper body to try to do the sit-up, trying to exhaust the, that incorrect behavior as a strategy to arrive at the correct part of the body to sit up, doesn't really work in practice within a yoga class. In a retreat with fasting, yes, you can do that, but in the class, no. So in class, we have to be clever. We do neck and shoulder release first to take away the upper body tensions and to create lightness in the upper body. This could include pounding the chest, twisting the arms. There's no value in practicing trying to sit up the incorrect way. You'll just create more upper body tension. 
maybe in partners as a way to get some blood in the belly at an early stage of the process, but otherwise there's no point in keeping on getting them to sit up if they're just using their chest and trying to throw or hoik themselves up with their arms and their shoulders, tightening the neck and so on. If you see that in the class, you need to stop. Sit-ups in a class. Sit-ups can be at any stage of the class, depending on the people in front of you. Can they pull their toes back? Can they pull the chin down? Can they breathe out? You have to fix those things first before you can do the sit-ups. These prerequisites might take 10 minutes or they might end up being the goal of your whole class. Obstacles to sit-ups include, are the sides jammed? Are the sides tight? Is the neck jammed? Are they stressy in the chest? Uh, I should just mention, in, in, in most of you'll be familiar that sit-ups generally, a lot of it, we're talking about small intestine function there, right? Which is the fire element, that's the context for this next bit. So the heart regulate, heart meridian function, regulates fire. And the only way to fix the small intestine in the neck and shoulders is through the heart and heart constrictor to regulate the fire. Small intestine excess leads to hot diarrhea, sounds exciting, madness, heat, pressure, can't metabolize starches. It's got a lot to, to say for it, doesn't it? The person with small intestine excess has obsessiveness instead of focus. Back to classes. When to use sit-ups in a class. One, as soon as the students start to get a bit buggered, do some sit-ups. They'll become happy and glad and relaxed, just as you are when you're about to do something that you like. Now you have the energy to do stuff again. Two, do sit-ups at the end of class to pull people back together if they're a bit wobbly from, yeah? Sit-ups can be at any stage of the class, but you can't start the class with sit-ups because you need to fix the upper lower body problem first, as we explained before. But sometimes, for example, you might only need a few minutes warm-up first. Then you can do the sit-ups, perhaps as a lead-up to shoulder stand. Okay. Um, if you could demo this one. So sit-ups sit -ups in pairs where the student sits on their heels with their fingers interlaced behind their head and the other person sitting on their knees forces you not to use the upper body because you can't collapse the chest and do those sit-ups. So sit-ups, like as a general thing, right? Sit-ups create upper lower, which you can then use for other things in a class, like correct left and right. But then again, you might need to do left and right first in order to be able to do sit-ups. First, we, one, build a very powerful core. Sit-ups, raw material. Yeah, that's that fire element. So first, we build a very powerful core, and then two, we refine that. Um, on the difference between the pelvic floor and the hara. So the pelvic floor or base chakra relates to the body level, the bladder, talking bladder, meridian function, uh, CV1, spine fertility. The sacral chakra below the navel relates with life force. That becomes a little bit relevant later on. So two reasons for, for sit-ups. This, this builds on what was said earlier of when you can use it in class, yeah? So one, about three quarters of the way through the class, use sit-ups to consolidate functioning, bringing it back into the hara. For example, in a large intestine class, you might do large intestine sit-ups at this stage, three quarters of the way through the class, to bring the new improved large intestine function into the hara. Then follow with an asana or a spinal adjustment. Or two, you can use sit-ups to give an energy boost when they're flagging, as mentioned before. 
The other option, three, is near the start of the class to give them something to be able to do anything because nowadays often people start with nothing in them. Yeah? Focusing on others. People need to focus, as a philosophical aside I suppose, people need to focus on others to keep growing past a certain point. In our yoga journey as teachers, we're supposed to focus on our own health for the first part of the pro process and then shift to serving something outside ourselves for the second half of the process. Back to sit-ups. Uh, leg lifts versus sit-ups. If you were doing both, which would you do first? These days, do leg lifts before sit-ups in class rather than afterwards because people are so stressed, you need to release the neck and shoulders a bit before the sit-ups. Safety. Sit-ups are safe to do as long as you do them properly. That is with the chest up, not contracted. There are no other contrary indications. Later on he says something different, but at that point he said that. Yeah. Uh, diet. If you increase the salt, water element, in the diet, you will decrease the fire element via the control cycle. This is good if the heart meridian function is excess, but not if it's deficient. Okay, and now we're going to go across to sit-ups for different organs. Okay, so these are the kidney sit-ups. Yep. So the, the kidney meridian function is so deep, it's hard to access from the front. But that will access the kidney. Also, thanks Dean. Does it matter how far up you go back? Um, I don't want to add anything okay. beyond what he said. Um, <laughs> but I know from my own practice, um, that's a really beautiful pose because as you go back, you'll find your own limit and as yeah. you're doing it, you end up going further and further and further. It's really hard to do that one wrong. Yeah. Of, you know. <laughs> Keep them back. Keep them back. That's yeah, that's it. Back. Keep that and, and breathe. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so back to kidney sit-ups, right? So um, that one will access the kidney in pairs. Also, if you push the knee down, yeah, so in that, that position there, yeah, um, if you push that knee, down, the bent knee down a lot, you can actually access the kidney function in that sit up. Now, this is one I have played with, and if your knee's coming up at all, you won't hit the kidney. It just, you won't feel it there. If the knee's even just resting on the floor, you won't hit, you won't feel it. It's got to be actively pushing down that bent knee and then um, you can feel that kidney function kick in. So it's a hard one, but it can be done in sit-ups. Okay, also the knees, that one, kidney, yeah? Okay, next one, liver. If you're twisting at the waist. Yeah, 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 yeah. So there's liver, twisting at the waist with the sitter. <laughs> Good on you. Small intestine, just knee out to the side. That's it. We all know that one. Um, large intestine, straight legs, feet mat width apart. Large intestine, bladder, wide legs. You're going to have free yoga class. <laughs> okay. Um, so sit-ups with mat, legs, mat width, as we said before. Large intestine, transverse colon, it's a bit more specifically. Um, these sit-ups can be used to fix hernias from a lack of large intestine pressure. Even the wide-legged sit-ups, the bladder ones, has a large intestine aspect to it. Uh, large intestine, continuing with large intestine, um, this one, where you hold halfway up, holding the breath, push the big toes down, that ex accesses the liver, which supports the lower hara, sorry, large intestine, that supports the large intestine, which supports the lower hara in general. So there's another large intestine one. Lung and large intestine, 
We, this is actually a leg lift thrown in there, <laughs> where the extending of the arms is the, is the lung function and the leg lift working the lower belly large intestine function. Um, large intestine, uh, what do we got there? Half boat, where you're lifting, where you're holding the pose and you're lifting both front and back there. Also large intestine there. It's not, I mean, it's not a sit up, but it is. It's just, you're working the same function, yeah? Uh, large intestine spirit exercise. You know that one? You're throwing? Yeah, throwing arms and legs. That one. That's it, you got it. <laughs> Whoa, Lisa Foster. Whoa. Okay. Uh, lungs. According to Andre, lungs, there are no lung sit ups as such. Maybe the kumbaka aspect in there, but otherwise, no. Um, spleen. Okay, these ones, uh, you could say these sit ups are spleen, but really it's working the front of the sacrum and balancing the coccyx and the sacrum and fixing the resultant hip problems, the twists that lead to neck and back problems problems. Um, that was bladder and liver combined. Uh, breath retention. Fully exhaled. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah, so actually this one, this one higher up, yeah, maybe try from sitting. To okay, so bladder and liver sit-ups. Um, on the belly. So we, we're maybe a little higher up. With, yeah, 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 yeah. Because you're trying to hit that liver function, that liver function in, up under there, yeah? Um, we only do these in partners because no one can do them. <laughs> <laughs> which, which means you can only reuse them to stimulate. Yeah, because the mind's not in the body for it. You, you just stimulate the function because um, they've got someone else holding them there. Okay, small intestine. Now that's the one you were doing before. No. Yeah, so now we're doing small intestine. That one. Spleen, further on. You're almost there. Yeah, that's it. That's spleen. Legs as straight as they can go before the feet start to separate. Okay, liver sit-ups. Um, this is the one we were doing before. You're twisting. Oh, twisting. Yeah, sit up halfway, hold. That's the setup. Then you twist as hard as you can so the shoulders to the front and then come out the rest, come up the rest of the way, breathing out, breathing out, breathing out. Got it. So remember to access the liver function, you need to extend the spine. Liver 14 is here. Um, on, in the ribs over the liver organ itself. So this point goes straight to the organ and you have to sit tall to activate that point in the sit-up. Um, do you want to just do that one, one more time? So yeah, you come up halfway and then you twist. Yeah, and the spine is extending. Yeah, there you got it. And you sit up, perfect. Liver function. <laughs> All right, next page. Um, <laughs> You're going to love that one. <laughs> so, small, the small intestine sit-up. Where you, you remember that one? <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> so the knees twist to the side, and as they're twisting, so the hands are coming up. Not one, then the other. Yay! <laughs> oh, well done! <laughs> to access the small intestine and the bladder meridian functions, you need to use the whole body because it's such a big function. Uh, gallbladder, um, for example, if with gallbladder, the asanas need the whole body. Even if you've got the wrist cocked, you lose the gallbladder meridian function because it travels that whole length. Uh, heart sit-ups. Uh, legs apart so the chest stays open. Yeah, that's it. Strong man. Yep. 
<laughs> heart, <laughs> heart constrictor, same thing, but extending, yep. Legs apart so the chest can stay open. Okay. <laughs> Uh, triple heater, it's one, one knee in, legs, legs wide, I think, and foot out to the side, if you can. Okay, like, and not coming up. Yeah, the, the knee, knee down, obviously, yeah. That's triple heater. Um, as we know, you don't have to be able to do the sit up, just attempt it correctly. Oh. Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> There's a demo of that. <laughs> I saved you. All right. So leading with the arm in a sit-up disengages the fire element. And what I've got here is heart constrictor, heart, small intestine, and I actually wrote down gallbladder. Now, I don't know if that's a mistake on someone's part and it should have been triple heater, or actually that's thrown in there with the others. Um, someone smarter than me can figure that out. Uh, but leading with the arm disengages the fire element, heart constrictor, heart, small intestine, and I wrote gallbladder, to use the belly and not the chest. Sit-ups with twisting, twisting the arms out, accesses the heart, liver, and large intestine function. Twisting the arms in, accesses small intestine and gallbladder functions. In practice, you do whichever direction is harder. And the twisting of the arms opens up all the neck and shoulder functions by creating pressure in the belly. So that's just adding twisting of arms to any of those sit-ups? Uh, all I've got is what I've... Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I know in general terms we're talking liver, right? Yeah. Liver twisting. Yeah, but but now, he's getting, now he's getting more specific about... Go... Try it, tell me. I want to know. <laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? We should be able to feel these things and figure it out for ourselves, you know? Um, so what you really want with these twisting arm um, sit-ups is to have the knees out. And this is assuming that you've got small intestine jitsu and large intestine kyo. Um, but you can do them with straight legs as a stepping stone. And it's one long breath, keep going as you sit up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So maybe that answers your question. Yeah. Maybe he's talking specifically in that leg position. Yeah? Big toes touching. Big toes pushing together. Liver, yes. Right. Okay. Combinations of sit-ups. So why would you do a combination of sit-ups rather than just one type that targets a specific organ that relates to the theme of your class? Okay, two reasons. One, if you are trying to do something, for example, re-establish a correct upper-lower body relationship in order to fix, say, neck and shoulder, but they can't do the specific sit-up for that, then you might do other therapy to try to get them to that sit-up. Or two, in the morning, you might do various types of sets, different ones, um, to create some stimulation, to stir it up, to give the possibility of using the belly, not the chest. And this stirring up is breaking congestion via squeezing the blood, squeezing so that the blood comes in. Okay, other contradictions for, contraindications for sit-ups. So it's not safe to do sit-ups when you've had recent operations in the last couple of years, uh, post-caesarean section, hernias. Uh, with the above people, stretch and twist instead of doing sit-ups. The teacher needs to look for guarding. Guarding is an involuntary tensing of the abdomen to protect the area. Think of what happens if you're unexpectedly poked in the belly, right? So you've got to watch out for that in people to show that there's stuff going on there. Okay, basic steps in evolution. So we're always happy when a baby can kick her legs in the air, sit up, crawl, stand, and walk. These are basic steps in evolution. And we mimic and stylize these in yoga 
and use them as tools to evolve spiritually and emotionally. Obviously, sit-ups is fits in that sequence. Yeah. Um, boat pose is the end goal of sit-ups. Sit-ups lead to the asana of boat pose or boat poses. This then needs to be kept in further poses, for example, standing poses. To do this, you need to evolve emotionally and mentally. So we're practicing moving within yourself without losing what you had before. So one function building on another. So you do the asana, that builds the function, and then you move into the next asana, maintaining the function from the first one and now building on top of that. My little bit added in there, back to Andre. So it's centered, but meeting two different things, holding both concepts at the same point. Within every asana is all the functions, but there's an emphasis on some, depending on the, which asana it is. Bow pose forces incredible focus and power in the belly and deep into the core. There's full dynamism in the legs. Do you want to just have a go at a... Sorry, mate. <laughs> Full boat. <laughs> yep, that's it. Full boat pose forces incredible focus and power in the belly and deep into the core. There's full dynamism in the legs, which we keep straight and moving away through the center of the leg bone. The leg bone, yeah? The upper body is also lifting away, which is why the arms are in that position. Dandasana and variations with the arms up, uh, turns into the boat poses. The legs in Dandasana push the back of the legs down through the front of the leg. The center of the leg is the goal, but you push the back of the leg down through the front in order to hit that center. And the only way to sit for a long time is to have your full mind in the bones and let the muscles relax. The focus is not on the bones themselves, it's on the quality of the base chakra and the sacrum chakra. Now the point of Hatha is to strengthen the mind so that you can stay there. In each asana, you lengthen the muscles, you lengthen the neck and spine, and this brings attention to the stabilizing function, which generates the core. And that's it.